Hello guys, welcome to episode 13 of our access control explanatory series. In this episode, we are going to go over the AC14 permitted action without identification or authentication. But as always, a free way to support the channel is by hitting the subscribe button to help grow the channel if you haven't done so already. And I appreciate that support. And also do smash the like button and the notification bell to get notified whenever I upload new videos. Thank you and let's get started. This control is put in place if and when the organization or the agency has any business needs that allow any information systems actions to be performed without a unique identification or authentication of the user. This control is selected for all the control baselines, that is the low, the moderate or the high baselines. For example, in the Rev4, we, we can see that the AC14 permitted action without identification or authentication is selected for the low baseline, the moderate baseline, and the high baseline. Likewise, in the Rev5, it is also selected. You can see that AC14 permitted action without identification or authentication is selected for the low baseline, the moderate baseline, and the high baseline. All right, so now let's read the control requirement for AC14 in the 853 Revision 5 document. AC14, permitted actions without identification or authentication. The control. A, identify assignment organization defined user actions that can be performed on the system without identification or authentication consistent with organizational mission and business functions. And document and provide supporting rationale in the security plan that is the SSP for the system, user actions not requiring identification or authentication. Now let's look at the discussion. Specific user actions may be permitted without identification or authentication if organizations determine that identification and authentication are not required for the specified user actions. Organizations may allow a limited number of user actions without identification or authentication, including when individual access public websites or other publicly accessible federal systems. When individuals use mobile phones to receive calls or when fax mails are received, organizations identify actions that normally require identification or authentication, but may, under certain circumstances, allow identification or authentication mechanisms to be bypassed. Such bypasses may occur, for example, via a software-readable physical switch that commands bypass of the login functionality and is protected from accidental or unmonitored use. Permitting actions without identification or authentication does not apply to situations where identification and authentication have already occurred and are not repeated, but rather to situations where identification and authentication have not yet occurred. Organization may decide that there are no user actions that can be performed on organizational systems without identification and authentication and therefore the value of the assignment operation can be none. This control has no control enhancement. The only one that was previously has been removed or withdrawn and incorporated in the parent or the base control, which is the AC14. Now let's look at the control requirement simplification. This control is to ensure that if the organization allows actions to be performed without unique user identification, or authentication, then these allowed actions are documented and approved prior to allowing those actions on the system. That is, whenever there is the need for any actions not requiring, you know, uh, identification or authentication to be performed on a specific or a particular system, then those actions should be documented first and approved. And it should be in the SSP or any other policy documentation stating that these are the actions that are allowed to be performed on the system without identification or authentication. So what are some of the benefits or why do we need this kind of uh, control within our system or within the federal, federal system or organizational system? Easy access to public website or publicly accessible federal system if there is the need for public or the public to access any federal system you know then you don't need to have identification and authentication on that publicly facing website these are some of the 
you know, benefit or the only reason why we can think of not requiring identification or authentication to access any federal system. Now let's look at the control assessment approach. To ensure this control is in place and functioning as intended, that is the design and functional or the operational effectiveness of the control, we do the following. We obtain and examine the access control policy and procedure, the dash one control. Read the policy. What is the policy saying about this control? And then the second one is you obtain and examine the system security plan, the SSP, to read the permitted actions without identification or authentication control to ensure that the agency or the organization has documented the rationale as to why specific actions on the system do not require identification or authentication. Also, to read the rationale, make sure you read the rationale documented to make sure they do not pose any security risk. If they do, call it out. Because sometimes, you know, um, in the past, there is the need for that kind of uh, actions to be performed on the system. But as time goes on, the need for that or, you know, the business need for that action is no longer required or is no longer feasible. It's not, it's no longer required on the system, but these control are still being left on the system or is being implemented. If the rationale is no longer valid, you know, you'll have to call it out and say, Hey, this is what it used to be, but now you guys do not need this anymore. So this has to be taken off and I'll, and also the document has to be really you know, review and update it to make sure it does not state that the action is required on the system. That is the action without, you know, identification and authentication on the system. All right, that's it for this episode. Our next episode will be on AC 16. That is the security attributes. If you like this control series, you can support me to create more of these videos by subscribing to the channel and hitting the like button for the YouTube algorithm to expose these videos to more people who might benefit from these videos as well. And always remember, as we help others, we cannot help but help ourselves. Thank you, and I will see you in our next episode.